Good morning. Before Mass, we're going to review, we have new Mass parts this week. It's been a few years since we've done them, so we're going to review them before Mass. So they're all fresh in our minds. And we're going to start with the Gloria. <laughs> to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God and the earth, peace to people of good will. All right, so we'll try that one more time. You can all join in with us this time. Glory to God in the highest. Gospel acclamation. is new, so we'll do it a few times. Sure. So the words are save us, savior of the world, save us, savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free, you have set us free.
Wonderful, thank you. Welcome to presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary Parish as we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you are visiting today, we welcome you and invite you to worship with us again. Please rise for our opening hymn, number 799. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this morning I woke up and opened my window and I was like, oh Lord, there's snow outside. But then I looked better and it was, oh, just a heavy fog. Still a gift. And what a beautiful morning it is for us to come together to give our Lord praise and glory. And so, now, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God above earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, 
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment for the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. With that, when that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized one of his fellow servants and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant, as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, rich in compassion. Is that true? You believe it? Ah, oh, good. Because he is. So, my dear brothers and sisters, 
has anyone ever asked you, or, some, or maybe hopefully you've asked yourself, who do you, what kind of person do you want to be when you, get, when you grow up, when you're older? Has anyone ever asked you that? What kind of person do you want to be? Or what kind of person do I want to be when I grow up? And what do you typically answer with? So I'm not talking about like a career, but I'm just talking about what kind of person you want to be, right? And I would assume that many people would say, well, I want to be a good person. I want to be a good person, someone that others can look up to, a good role model. And I, you know, maybe that's, I think that's pretty fair to say that to what most people would say, right? And so I'm going to ask you this question now then. What is a good person? What does a good person look like? Because it's a very generic term, right? Every one of us has an idea of what good means, especially what good means for me, right? Well, I, I, I'm a good person. I give to the poor. I uh, help the sick. I see someone by themselves. I go talk to them. I'm a good person, aren't I? It's like, well, if you do those things, sure. That's good for you, right? But is there more that we can do? Yeah, for sure. Because those are just parts of being a good person. And, but there is one more thing that you know, many times we forget that, all, that it, uh, is also required of a good person. And the readings from today speak of it. A good person is also one who knows how to forgive. Who knows how to forgive. To have mercy. And why is this? Because a good person should understand how weak they are, right? That they have their own shortcomings, right? A good person has, should have self-knowledge. I know who I am. I'm not perfect. And so because I know I'm not perfect, I know I make mistakes. I know I have hurt others before. And I know that I have to ask for forgiveness from others. And so because I know that I lack some of those things, I'm not perfect in those ways, there's still room for improvement in my life. And especially in the area of forgiveness. Because we think it's easy, but it's not, right? And we think it's easy, but it's definitely not. Especially when it comes to someone who's close to you, who has hurt you or betrayed you. Yes, I forgive you, but maybe it's just words that are coming out of my mouth. In my heart, I don't. I'm still holding on to the pain, the hurt. And so, what do we do with it? What do we do with it? Well, we've got to give it to our Lord, right? Lord, help me to forgive this person in front of me for what they've done to me. Because I know I have myself hurt others. And this goes a long way, my dear brothers and sisters, right? Because when we're able to forgive someone, especially from our hearts, what happens? Well, there's healing in it. There's healing in it because when I have unforgiveness in my heart, something bad starts to grow there, something toxic. And it'll begin to eat away at your life, especially in ways that you don't recognize because it's going to manifest itself towards the, the, in the way that you treat others and even yourself. And some of those things are anger and wrath, like what we heard in the first reading. Right? In the first reading, we hear from the book of Sirach, Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The sinner hugs them tight. They're unwilling to let it go because of the hardness of their heart. And that's what happens when we have unforgiveness, when we aren't able to forgive others. And it's a hard thing, right? How do I forgive someone who's hurt me? And how many times must I forgive them? Well, in the gospel, Peter asks Jesus that same question, right? 
Lord, how many, how many times must I forgive my brother if he sins against me? Seven times? I'm pretty sure he was excited when he had that answer, right? <laughs> Seven. That's a pretty darn good number. That's a perfect number. And it's more than once, and it's more than twice. And then Jesus responds by saying, yeah, you got it, brother. You're good. Is that right? No. How does Jesus respond to Peter's answer? That's right, Nick. Seventy-seven times you must forgive your brother. Not just seven, but seventy-seven. And what is our Lord trying to say by this? Seven times is good, but 77 times is better. Because what our Lord is trying to do is he's trying to challenge us to be perfect like himself. Seven is a good number, especially when it's the same person that has been hurting you with the same uh, problem, right? And so seven times of forgiveness, that's a lot. But our Lord is saying, you can do more, though. You can do more. And it will hurt, but you can do more. Because, again, when we are, are able to open our hearts to forgive those around us, especially those closest to us, it humbles us. Because it reminds us of how much our Lord, our Father in heaven, has forgiven us for our trespasses, our, our own sins. But also at the same time, it's also about the other person too. The one who's asking for forgiveness. Because typically when you ask someone to forgive you for something you've done against them, what you're telling them is, I acknowledge my wrongdoing. And for that, I tell you I'm sorry. And if I'm saying sorry because of what I'm acknowledging, that means that hopefully... I'm going to try not to do it again. Right? Otherwise, why would someone forgive me if I have no intention of changing my ways, right? And so, if I'm asking for forgiveness, hopefully in my heart I'm saying, I'm going to try not to hurt you again in the same way. And so then, for someone to ask you for forgiveness more than one time, especially in that one area, well, maybe it's something that they struggle with. And this is where that patience and compassion is important. The mercy that our Lord is trying to remind us to have. Forgive them because they're working on it. But at the same time, keep them accountable, right? Help them to grow from that mistake for that shortcoming so that they too can become perfect. And it's a beautiful exchange that's ha taking place here. What our Lord is asking from all of us for one another. Because what he wants most in the world is for the family to be reconciled with each other. The way that he wants us to be reconciled with him. And it's not an easy thing, my dear brothers and sisters. Striving for holiness, to be perfect, to be good, is not easy. But it's worth it. Because when we're able to do that, those things that uh, build up in our hearts from unforgiveness, again, wrath and anger and all those hateful things, they go away. And then, as they go away, you are going to find out, and I guarantee you, your shoulders are going to be lightened, the burden lightened. You're going to find more joy in your life. You're going to find more joy with the people around you, even if you recognize their shortcomings. Because throughout this process, this whole conversion, you're going to find out how loved you are by God and by those whom you have shown mercy and compassion towards. And it's a beautiful thing that I guarantee each and every one of you long for. Because I long for that too. I know what it feels like to hold anger and resentment. It's not fun. It's heavy. It's draining. I'm tired when I have those things in my heart. But when I'm able to let it go, I'm free. I can do whatever I want without feeling uh, that burden anymore. 
I can be in the company of those who have hurt me and not feel ashamed and not feel embarrassed. I'm like, I'm at peace. I, don't, I, don't, I have no qualms here. And it's a beautiful thing. But what happens when we choose not to forgive and we allow our hearts to remain hardened? Well, like in the same gospel, the parable that our Lord gives us. When that slave goes to the master and begs for forgiveness and he receives it, but then he goes to his other peers and is not willing to forgive them, what does the master do to him? Throws him in prison and says, you wicked servant, I forgave you of your big debt and you would not forgive your peer for that little one? Shame on you. And so our Lord is speaking to us. If you are unwilling to forgive others when I have forgiven you for those things that you have done, beware, there are consequences. There are consequences. Right? Not only is that anger and the hatred going to build up inside of you, but it's going to enslave you and keep you in prison. That's the consequence of unforgiveness. And our Lord, and I think I hope you remember this, he's come to set us free. That's why he came, right? To free us. And he does that by reminding us, if you want to be good, then become like me. Be holy and perfect like me. But be practical about it, right? And one of the things that, again, like I said at the very beginning, we say, yes, I'm a good person. I feed the poor. I give to the sick. I clothe the uh, naked. I do all those things. Well, don't forget forgiveness, too. That's one thing that we sometimes hold, again, in our hearts because it's the one thing that we can control when someone's hurt us. So let it go. Let it go. Forgive them so that your hearts may be clean. So that you can truly love the people around you the way that you want to love them. And more especially, that you can have peace in your life. That's a beautiful thing, right? For those of you who have experienced that peace, share that with others. Remind them the beauty of letting go of burdens. And then one other thing, too, that's important, right? As I told you, it's about relationships, right? And so what a beautiful way for us to celebrate this weekend than with our parish festival. Reminding ourselves in our midst of our brothers and sisters to give praise to God by saying thank you for bringing us together, not just to worship you and to be with you, Lord, but also to celebrate, to have a party, right? And I tell you, last night we had a party, if you missed it. The taco dinner, the bonfire, the laughs, the joys. But that was just the beginning. It's not over yet. We still have an after party after Mass today to go to. And I'm going to see you all there, right? I'm going to see you all there, right? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> because this is why we do these things. Because our Lord has gathered us together as a family. And one more thing that's going to take place this morning, which should bring each and every one, each and every one of us much joy, is we have two of our younger, uh, little brothers in our midst who will be receiving the Eucharist for the very first time. You know, we've got Robert and Adrian, who have been ready and excited for a long time, right? And they're ready. And I asked them this morning, they, yeah, yeah, they're ready. They, they want this. And so this morning we're going to see a beautiful thing. The joy from these two young men, but also reminding each, of us, each and every one of us too what the Eucharist is, what Jesus gives to us, but himself, so that we can continue to be transformed into his image and likeness. To be clean and, uh, of all the evil in our hearts, so that we can truly love each other the way that he desires us to be. So keep them, our brothers, in your prayers and keep each other in your prayers. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen.
Coming together as a family, let us profess our one faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born unto the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Because we know how much our Heavenly Father loves us and desires us to come to Him as His beloved children, we bring to Him now these petitions. For the Church, her leaders, and all the faithful, that all may be blessed with wisdom and devotion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who hold public office will imitate the goodness of God, who secures justice and the right of all the oppressed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this National Catechetical Sunday, that God may bless all those engaged in the work of education in the faith, especially here at Presentation of Mary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our parish synod evangelization team, that they may be fruitful instruments of renewal in our parish in their effort to invite others to encounter Christ more deeply through one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who are homebound and shut in, may they be drawn deeper into the light of Jesus with an increase of hope and joy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, may Jesus bless them with healing, hope, and the peace that they long for. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been called to the banquet of eternal life, and for those who grieve for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased members of the Hill Murray class of 1973, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also pray for the Donch and Mung family, whose sons are about to receive you, Lord Jesus, for the very first time in the Eucharist. May, the, may receiving the Eucharist transform their lives so that they may become more like you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and petitions spoken and unspoken in the signs of our hearts, and please make them your own. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Michael and Joseph, his auxiliaries, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. 
Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and improve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that I may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant to Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of our high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. distribution of Holy Communion, my dear brothers and sisters. We're going to distribute, Deacon and I will distribute first to uh, Robert and Adrian first, and then we'll come back and then we'll come uh, redistribute Holy Communion for everyone afterwards. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
the working of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask you to be seated for a moment. Got a couple of special people in our midst today, so I'm going to invite forward one of them right now. That's um, Mrs. Molly Noel who is our administrator, my administrator's assistant and our family faith coordinator here at the parish. Uh, please come and share a little bit about yourself and what you do. Awesome. Hello. 
Um, as Father said, my name is Molly Noel. Um, I'm our new administrative assistant here at the parish, and I'm also in charge of our family faith formation program. So I'm here to let you know this morning um, that the weekend of October 1st, I think it's actually on the 1st, um, we'll have our first faith formation class. Um, they'll take place right after Mass on Sundays here. Um, we have programs for kindergarten through eighth grade. So if you or your family is interested in being a part of that, um, we have registration forms in the back. There's also a QR code back there if you want to register online, or there's a QR code in the bulletin. So all sorts of different ways to do that. Um, also at the same time, we'll have a formation kind of series for parents. Um, so we welcome the whole family to be a part of that. That'll be a really wonderful thing. Um, and then another thing that we're kind of getting started that I'm excited about is there is now a youth group that's forming for different parishes in our area. So if you are a high schooler, you know a high schooler, you have a high schooler, um, they are welcome to join this youth group. It's called Next Level. There's posters around. The first event is next Saturday, um, and it's going to be a net retreat at Transfiguration Parish in Oakdale. So if you're interested in that and have any questions, um, I will be around. I'm also the person that answers the phone if you call the parish. So if you call the parish, I will get that. Also, my email is all around. Um, so if you have any questions for me or just want to say hi, um, I'll be around throughout the festival. Um, but also, I'm just in the parish office. So stop in and see me. So Molly is kind of a shy and timid person, so make sure you go say hi to her, okay? And you know you can't uh, introduce one without the other, so that's her husband next to her, Isaac. So don't be shy. So you can say hi to Isaac too, okay? Now the other person I want to introduce to you uh, in our midst is this gentleman in black, uh, Josiah Hansen from the Diocese of Rapid City, South Dakota. So he's our new teaching parish seminarian. And so, Josiah, just FYI, there's two parishioners here you, who you will see regularly at the seminary. One's right to the right of you. Um, but, you know, so last, in the last two years, we had Josh Richards, who was our teaching parish seminarian uh, from, where was he from? Nebraska. That's right, down south. Uh, and, you know, he had discerned out, and now uh, the seminary thought, well, presentation's not uh, such a bad place, so let's send another t seminarian here. So, uh, if you see J uh, Josiah around, please make sure you say hi to him. Uh, and like uh, Josh before, he'll be here, uh, here and there. So, when you do see him, please say hi and just reintroduce yourself to him so he can be f become more familiar with you. And he's a, kind of a timid guy, too, so uh, break him out of his shell, please. And again, as uh, Molly mentioned, you know, October is our Faith Formation Month, and so not only is the normal Faith Formation program starting up again, but RCIA is too. So for those of you who might know of someone who's interested in learning more about our Catholic faith or just any, of you, any one of you who want to deepen your knowledge of our uh, faith, you know, I encourage you to take part in that as well. And last but not least, the moment you've been waiting for besides the Eucharist, is our festival, the post party. So, just a quick update. Uh, it's a little turned around from last year. So, Kenny Hall will have bingo this uh, morning. I think it starts at 11. And if I'm wrong, then someone shout it out. But it's at 11. But outside of Kenny Hall, there will be a cornhole or beanbag ta uh, tournament going on. So, if you want to play, make sure you sign up for that. That will uh, take place outside of Kenny Hall again. And then there's food, kitty land, cakewalk, uh, books, media, all in the gym, okay? So you got to travel to the gym if you want to have some excitement. If then you, when you get tired and you want to just sit down and play some bingo, come back to Kenny Hall. But the gym, again, is where all the food is as well. So get out there for some french fries, some hot dogs, brats, burgers, pulled pork, cotton candy, snow cones, popcorns, and more. And last night I forgot to remind people, but there's also Dean Baskins and Silent Auction taking place in the hallway of the middle school and the old kindergarten rooms. So there's a lot going on, so get around. And because you guys all responded that I'll see you there, I will see you there, okay? So please stand up.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks to God. God.